at CPRC. So first of all, I want to thank you all again for everything that you've shared, um, even just your presence in the room. You may not have spoken, <laughs> but just your presence in, your, in the room uh, here with us to get uh, over the last two days and your engagement really contributes to all of our work and um, just us moving together as a field and as a community. Um, as part of uh, a, a CPRC tradition um, is a reflective closing panel. And so what we usually do is we invite a few members of the community um, to share just an insight that they had, a connection that they made, um, maybe even you know a, something that they saw missing from the conversations. Um, I mean, I'm always so surprised and delighted to hear all the different reflections. So really, it's anything goes. But it's also an invitation to all of you. So they'll kick us off, but it's an invitation to everyone else as well to share a reflection, an observation, a question. Um, and this is a, a really important tradition for us in CPRC because we really do, um, I've found that over the years, it really does lead to movement um, in our work in, you know, whether it's the next meeting, the next time we get together, or things that we'll be talking about on our projects that maybe we haven't been talking about before. Um, I know that myself, I've been challenged over the last two days. Um, I'm exhausted <laughs> coming into these two days, and yet at the same time, in every conversation that I sat in on, there were challenges, there were new things, there were connections that I was making because of the conversations that were happening, and that's exactly what CPRC is about. That's, you know, what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring all of this wonderful work that we're aware of and that we've been funding or that we funded many years ago. I'm so happy to see so many scholars, so many former scholars that have been presenting um, over the last couple of days. Uh, so this is, this is what we do at CPRC. Thank you for staying around for the last two days. So I'd like to invite, and if each of the panelists could just say, you could stay where you're, where you're already seated. <laughs> If you could just introduce yourselves, because I think you all bring, a, you, everyone has a very unique perspective here, but I'd like for folks to be you know, aware of the perspective that you're bringing to this as well. Thank you. All right, I can start. Hi, everybody. I'm Amber Sansbury. I'm a PhD candidate at George Mason University here in Virginia, or just across the way. Um, <laughs> I'm also um, uh, an emerging scholar through the National African American Child and Family Research Center. So shout out to Dr. Latrice Rollins and the team over here. Um, I'm one, just so honored to be asked to give reflections. Um, my mentor, Dr. Colleen Besley, and chair, <laughs> she actually was a child care scholar in 2010 and really instrumental in me getting uh, becoming a part of the consortium. So years ago, I attended this conference when I started my program, and I'm literally graduating in May. So it's been such a journey and a wonderful space. <laughs> um, as far as my insights, I'm just going to lift a couple of threads, right? It really was important to discuss connections and partnerships, not only looking at policy implementation at the federal level, the state level, the local, but with partners and think tanks and community-based organizations. So that relational component was really consistent throughout um, the last two days, right? I also was really excited to hear insights from the field, to think about evidence, how we produce evidence, how we conceptualize evidence, but also how we use evidence you know, in the field of early care and education and across the systems that families are impacted from birth into the early grades, right? And lastly, um, one of the most important components, which is an emerging area of research, um, was that focus on equity, right? And thinking about what does that mean? What does that look like in the field and how we conceptualize quality um, I'm really excited to see the emerging work that continues. Um, Dr. Amanda Coleman is really a, a part of that work in ACF and the team um, that continues to grow. And so, one, I'm just thankful to be a part of the space and to understand the power that we have as researchers to make those connections with policymakers. And I look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Hey, um, my name is Kimberly Belcher Badal. I am the executive director for the National Workforce Registry Alliance. Um, 
this is my first time attending this event. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually graduated almost 10 years ago with my PhD. It's been about that long since I've been in a research community conversation, so uh, a little bit overwhelming. Um, I had to turn on parts of my brain I haven't used in a long time. But um, I think what was most exciting for me in this experience was to see the workforce centered. Um, so often in the past, our focus tends to rely on children and families. Um, it is exciting to see the workforce put in the center of that as a critical element. Um, I think a couple of things that surfaced for me in this work, and I hesitate uh, just because it's not just a plug for registries, but I think I would um, implore you to return to registries as you think about data and workforce access. The registries have grown significantly in the past few years, and with the investments that have come um, in the last year or two and the, the growth that's coming, I think you're gonna find that they have a lot to offer in terms of data and uh, longitudinal information as well as access to the workforce. Um, in terms of research, just as I was listening, and I'm a little bit biased um, because I come from a mixed methods uh, methodology, but I think one of the things that I felt like could be stronger in future research is maybe gravitating towards participatory research or applied research methods so that we start to look at prioritizing the voices of the community itself and sort of interrupt the cycle of research that's it feels like about us without us so kind of just moving into um, more of a partnership I think and then um, Again, just to close, with registries on my mind, um, maybe just more researchers who have the ability or the skills to navigate administrative data, because I think there's a lot there. Um, it requires a different mindset than survey data. So that's it. Hi everyone, my name is Taylor Donovan. I'm Klinkit Unangan from uh, Southeast Alaska, although I now reside in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, I brought up this morning the involvement of tribes and that's really been heavy on my mind these last couple of days. Um, I think our last presenters just really covered that at no point in time can we achieve equity without every voice at the table and every voice from the beginning, right? It's not, we're gonna design this system with a state, we're gonna design this system, and then we're gonna remember to invite everyone else at the very end and kind of ask them what they think about it, right? Um, so it's been so enriching to spend these last couple of days, especially with researchers. I am a program person, I operate programs, um, and we're the lead childcare agency for our region in Alaska. Um, so I would really just challenge the um, committee to build those connections with tribes over the next few years. I um, brought up a couple times, there's actually uh, a conference that almost mirrors this that's exclusively focused on uh, native early childhood education, but all of the research is the same, it's just with a slightly different lens um, and a focus on tribal home visiting. Um, sorry, I had to take notes last minute because I just found out about this, so. <laughs> Um, also bringing, yeah, bringing those tribal voices to the table here because tribes have so much to learn from this research. A lot of tribes are um, implementing programs and are so program focused that it's important to kind of center it around ongoing and new research. Um, and then there's also a lot to be learned from tribes. So much of the last couple of days has been focused on how do we create uh, data systems that are across a variety of systems? How do we look at Head Start and home visiting programs, right? Um, and tribes already do all of that. Like our data system is all of that. So there's so much that can be learned from um, the tribal experience. So where I work, Cook Inlet Tribal Council, we operate a tribal Head Start. We operate tribal home visiting. We're connected to um, local early childhood education, but also an entire health system of all of our same participants shared across this. And we have that data sharing agreement in place to know um, a family's experience at their doctor and their home visiting and their TANF or other welfare programs. So really um, bringing those voices to the table so that we can all learn and grow from that uh, experience.
That's it. I had to check my notes, but that's all I had. And Bobby Weber doesn't really need to introduce herself to this crowd, I think. But I just wanted to clarify, too, that um, since we, we did lose two founding members of CPRC um, this year, Lee Creter and Art Emlin, we asked Bobby to please share some reflections to honor the two of them. Um, and I think anyone who knew the two of them, I mean, I got to spend time with Lee here, not Art, but the... Um, the culture of collaboration and the tone of the conversations over the last two days are totally Lee to me. And I kept thinking about that every, in every session, just the curiosity that people bring to, to each other's work, the kinds of really embracing whatever challenges someone might be speaking about and embracing it as your own and saying, okay, well, how do we solve that? That just, that was Lee from what I could see in the short time that I got to be in CPRC with him. So, but Bobby, we'd like to hear from you. Um, so is the mic on? Um, so I, I don't know if everyone knows, uh, the consortium grew out of the first five childcare research partnerships and they were funded by the research component of what is now OCC. And then, Eva Lisa, I think you were here when we transitioned out of the off that it was called the Child Care Bill, wasn't something anyway, and and into OPR. Um, so what happened is there were five grants, and Art Imlin uh, and I were in Oregon, and Lee was at Columbia University, and um, and out of the five grantees. Uh, we got together many times a year. It was very collaborative. And out of it grew um, a, a, a way of being together and learning from one another that um, is <laughs> what we're experiencing today. And I, I don't, um, I, I think it's important to recognize that it didn't happen by accident and that Lee and Art, just their way of being and uh, relating to each to other people. And so I'll, I'll tell a couple of stories. Um, Art Emlin is one of the first child care researchers in the United States. We, we think of, uh, you know, as maybe we have a long history. We do not have a very long history. Um, it goes back, um, he, his, his work uh, was on family child care and um, and those studies are still great to read. And um, then, and he, he was a great observer and um, paid a lot of attention to, uh, to all the people around him and uh, was a great gift to any, everybody who, who got to work with him. And Lee, you know, Anne's already told, um, I think everybody and in fact other people could share better than I. Um, Lee just exuded respect and caring about other people and and people gave that to him in return. <laughs> he was very loved and I want to end with the story. Um, I don't know if everybody knows but that Lee had a very severe Parkinson's and um, so right before COVID uh, my family went down and uh, spent a day with Lee. And um, he, by this time, he had a full-time caregiver. He was um, completely incapacitated, had trouble being understood. Um, and we went to lunch. He was in a care facility. And um, we went to lunch in their dining room. And we could hardly eat because people from all over that facility had to come over and talk to Lee. <laughs> Lee went there disabled and made all those connections. It was just beautiful to watch. And it was uh, so warm. Anyway, I thought that captured um, what those of us who knew Lee. But even if you didn't meet him or didn't work with him, you've experienced them Art and Lee. So. Thanks, 
so we invite you, anyone who would like to share a reflection, a connection, a challenge, an insight, at the mic. Or a moment of silence, we could do that too. <laughs> Come on, Gina. I can count on you. <laughs> it's not gonna be anything profound. I just wanna say it's lovely to be with everybody again, but it's also, I haven't, wasn't at the first one, but I was probably at the third one or something of the meetings of this. And to watch how our field has grown is phenomenal. And I just wanna say thank you to the Bureau for doing this in OPRE because it's not an accident, right? The fact that there is money invested and there's grants available and there's contracts available is why this community and this knowledge base has been built. There's nobody else that's funded it, but a little bit from foundations. But I just want to say thank you to you all for having, over the 20, 30 years that it's been, really invested in knowledge and in evidence and in all of us being here. So thanks. Take that back to my boss. <laughs> I'll say something. Hi, Francesca Wolf from um, Office of Child Care. And um, I am a researcher by trading, and so like in my new hat and, and, and where I work, it's, I miss these conversations. So I'm, it was uh, invigorating to me to, to think about all of the ways that I can use all of this great information in, you know, in my daily work. So thank you, just a thank you. I'm trying to get comfortable with silence. <laughs> <laughs> like my Quaker friends, I'm trying to get very comfortable with silence. Oh, I'll say Shannon. something. You're my friend. I'll help you out. I'm Shannon Christian. I used to be twice the head of the Office of Child Care and before that the Child Care Bureau long ago. So I've been in and around this for a long time and remember stories of the early years being um, I came a little more than the, you know, kind of a little bit into it, but that it was all descriptive. People didn't really even know what childcare really looked like. So before anyone started doing the kind of really in-depth things that characterize the last 10 or 15 years, it was just all, what is this thing out there that we call childcare? But what I wanted to say made me happy today when I was listening to the administration folks talk about their perspective and they were giving you all advice about make sure you do something that's that's useful you know don't just do research for research sake make sure it's linked to policy or something we really need to know and I think nobody needs to tell you all that all of that stuff that's going on has a purpose it's already making a difference it's relevant and you all deserve a huge round of applause for your dedication and your creativity and your caring about the fact that the policy is gonna get used. So thank you all. Thanks, Shannon. Hi, Nathan Burroughs. Uh, this is my first one of these. This is my favorite conference I've ever been to, so wow. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've learned so much. I come out of every one of these sessions with like 10 new research questions or ideas or methods or something. But I gotta say on the last panel, the, the Yoso cultural capital is a buffer of institutional inequality. With my training, I think very institutionally and like the individual responding to institutions, but thinking about that, that localized cultural uh, activity acting as a buffer, it completely blew my mind. So I'm so glad I heard that. Thank you for sticking around, Nathan, to hear it, and everybody else. Hi, I'm Tracy. I think most of you know me because I've spoken several times throughout the week. Um, I just wanted to echo what many people have said and say thanks to everyone for engaging in this. It's a really um, messy process of planning a meeting compared to other meetings and conferences that you attend. And I think 
the resulting agenda and conversations that have happened the past two days are, um, show the worth of that messiness. And it relates to, um, we know that partnership research is really messy and complicated, but it also brings forth the value of the work and makes it a little more connected to the communities that we're trying to study and serve. And so um, it's just really exciting to be here in person together and uh, seeing all of that come together. And I also wanted to make visible a couple people who have been behind the scenes and been very instrumental in bringing this together, which is Anne, and also our partner, Jennifer Park, who has um, done a great deal. And the other thing that I'll just share that I've been really struck by across the two days is um, we started the meeting wanting to celebrate and recognize the 25th anniversary of the ECE scholars and just seeing so many people still engaged in the community and acknowledging that they're former scholars and still engaged in this work and coming here so eager, um, oftentimes bringing their own students that they've brought up and mentored. Um, it's just really, really wonderful and lovely to see. So thank you guys for staying engaged and um, joining us for these two days. So as a reminder, we won't be convening again like this until 2025 because we will be now moving to a biennial schedule. So you have like three minutes to share a reflection <laughs> because then it's going to be another two years before you get an opportunity. So, yeah, I mean, yes, we have the National Research Conference next year, um, which is a much like bigger crowd, um, and of course evaluations. We're going to send out evaluations for you to fill out, so we'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts there. Um, and we will be having research collaboratives, a, a whole other new cohort of research collaboratives. So if you haven't had a chance to suggest a topic that you think you would love to be engaged in with all of these wonderful people and thinkers in the room over the next year or so, um, please give us your suggestions. There's places where you can put them back there or in the evaluations, you can do that as well. Okay, I won't hold you hostage if you'd like to go and no one else wants to speak. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your thoughts um, and all the wonderful work you're doing. And we'll see you again in two years.